Hello students, in this video we will be discussing about Arthropoiesis. Arthropoiesis is the process of origin, development and maturation of erythrocytes. Site of Arthropoiesis Where in which organ the Arthropoiesis occurs? In fetal life, that is, in the intrauterine life, the Arthropoiesis occurs in different sites in different periods. During first trimester, in the intrauterine life, it is mesoblastic stage. The RBCs are produced from mesenchymal cells of egg yolk. After three months, that is second trimester of intrauterine life, the RBCs are produced from the liver. It is called hepatic stage. Next is myeloid stage, in which RBCs are produced from the bone marrow. This stage is during last three months, that is third trimester. Next, after the intrauterine life, in newborn babies, children and adults, RBCs are produced from red bone marrow of all bones. Moving on to process of erythropoiesis. RBCs in the bone marrow are produced from the hematopoietic stem cells. These cells are called uncommitted pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. These cells are not designed to form a particular type of blood cells. Hence the name uncommitted pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. When these cells design to form a particular cell, then they are called committed pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. These committed stem cells are two types, lymphoid stem cells and colony forming blastocyte. Lymphoid stem cells gives lymphocytes and colony forming blastocytes gives to other blood cells other than lymphocytes. They are colony forming unit E from which erythrocytes that is RBCs are developed and colony forming unit GM from which granulocytes are produced. They are neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils, and also monocytes and colony forming unit M gives megakaryocytes which develops into platelets. Let's see the stages of formation of RBC. These are the stages of formation of RBC. From the colony forming units, the proerythrocyte is produced. This is the first stage of RBC, which is largest and biggest size with nucleus and no hemoglobin. The next stage is early normoblast, which is smaller when compared to proerythrocyte. The next stage is intermediate normoblast. The size further decreases. In this stage, the hemoglobin starts to appear. Next, the late normoblast, which is more smaller than the intermediate normoblast, has hemoglobin. And next, it gives to reticulocyte, then last, erythrocyte. The matured RBC with 6.5 to 7.5 microns diameter with hemoglobin has and has no nucleus. It takes at least 7 days from proerythrocyte to form RBC. There are some changes when colony forming unit pass on to stages to form RBC. Like decrease in size, disappearance of nucleus and appearance of hemoglobin. Let's see the changes through each stage. The first stage that is stem cells. The size is very large around 19 to 23 microns. It has very big nucleus and hemoglobin is absent and it undergoes mitosis. Coming to proerythroblast, the cell size has reduced to 15 to 20 microns and it has nucleus 3 fourth of the cell and HP is absent. In the early normoblast, the cell size comes to 14 to 16 microns and the nucleus size decreases further and the hemoglobin is also absent in this stage. In intermediate normoblast, cell size is up to 8 to 10 microns and the nucleus is very small, the hemoglobin starts to appearing. Then mitosis is also present in this stage. Coming to late normoblast, the cell size is further decreases to 7 to 8 microns and there is no nucleus, hemoglobin is present and mitosis stops. In the reticulocyte, the cell is up to 7 to 8 microns and there is no nucleus and HB is present. In the matured RBC, the cell size is 7 to 7.4 microns without nucleus and hemoglobin is present. These are the changes during the stages of erythropoiesis. 
this brings me to end of the video thank you keep watching